So I asked people on Discord, do you think cloud services are good? And I got some very interesting results. And even though cloud services can be quite good, people also explain why they have mixed messages about the actual service too. Hopefully this can change your mind about how cloud services work and if they are good or bad for today's standards. This is Shadow. Shadow was made by Blade and Blade is a French company where their goal is to make sure that people can enjoy the most out of the content they use on a cloud PC. With what it says on their website, there is over 80 million euros being raised over the years since 2015 and in pounds that is around 71.5 million pounds. And also by the website there has been over 200 employees that has been hired for this certain job. Cloud PCs are kind of different to cloud gaming, why is that? Uh, the difference is, is that instead of being sort of restricted to just playing games, the cloud PC allows you to go on a full high-end PC and you can do anything on this. So things like heavy specifications for gaming, video editing and graphic designing that you could not do before because your laptop is possibly very slow or maybe you've got an older PC then this shadow PC can eliminate all these restrictions and you are able to do the stuff that you want freely. Now stated in the title this review is going to be on the subscription on infinite and the only reason why I was able to get this is because I was one of the 10% of people that was able to get it earlier back in March. Without further ado, let me do my review and I am going to do some extra parts after this to make this review and such a bit more interesting. So how this review is going to work is after I've shown my review of a certain segment, on the screen I'll show you what's good and bad about it and I'll give it a rating between 1 to 10. Uh, this is the dashboard, this is before you start your actual shadow PC. And if you move over to the settings, it will show you things like your bandwidth that you can change depending how good and bad it is. And if it's really bad, you can start low bandwidth mode and that will help out with boosting it up. And then you could do full things like full screen on start. You can automatically shut it down once you close the stream window. The graphic drivers will always be updated. This is on the beta, this ain't on the official, so if you get the official this won't be there and they have things like high quality audio max frame rate and display in safe mode so since i've showed the dashboard and what you can do on the dashboard let's act let's start the shadow so on the shadow i'm going to be showing you a couple of things such as the computer so let's start off with the vm computer and specs so in the processor we have got an Intel Xeon W3235 CPU and it says here it's 3.30 gigahertz but I'll tell you why that where, why that's inaccurate in a minute. And then we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM in this computer as well. And then if we go to display we have the Quadro RTX 6000 which is the as the what the website says is the equivalent to the nvidia titan rtx now let's go back to system real quick and all i'm going to say is that the reason why this 3.30 gigahertz is wrong and why it displays that is if you go on specy which displays it more accurately if you scroll down there's actually five cores but it's 4 gigahertz as it's stated on their website. Now, since we are done with this part, let me show you what else they also give you with infinite. You get additional storage, so you get one terabyte. Not exactly, you get 250 gigabytes for your local C, and then you get 750 gigabytes for the D storage. The only reason why I've nearly got one terabyte on this storage is because I bought additional storage. So this is the quick menu. This is where you can look at your usage stats 
and uh, you've got the bandwidth here you've got display which allows you to go to different displays uh, then you go over to controllers and you can see see where you've plugged your controllers in you can also have PlayStation controllers plugged in as well and you can also have your microphone be enabled on here too and this is where you can plug in all your USB stuff and one of the cool things about this is uh, you've also got some shortcuts you've got the quick menu icon which is right here you can also turn that off so if I go into here and if I click on this if I put it away it'll just say quick menu do window alt o anyway this is it for the quick menu and I want to get on to the next segment the next thing I'm going to show you is the speed and how quick it can be the reason why I put it as grave lines is because Infinite and Ultra is separate to Boost. They have their own servers. So that's why I put it on OVH Cloud Gravelines. Anyway, without further ado, let's start the speed test. Now as stated on the website, there is very good results of near enough 1 gig down and it's 100 megabits up as well. So this was to show you how good the internet is in the shadow once you get on the shadow. Since I've explained a lot of the things that you get with your shadow, uh, so the computer, what internet you get with it, not in real life, but obviously in the shadow, and other perks that you get from getting a higher tier. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a couple of games and see how they work. So here is Forza Horizon 4. Here is also a benchmark while I talk about the game. Forza Horizon 4 is one of those games where you can just drive to your heart's content or you can go into races, etc, etc. As I am drifting, you can really see the great environment and the shadow takes it all in and outputs it really well. Now, since I'm done with Forza Horizon, let's get on to the next game, which will be GTA. Now, as I play GTA, the game itself handles the ultra quality really well. I am also going to show all the options of what's ultra quality, high, etc, etc. You know, max settings, basically. And as I go back, there's no building delays where it's updating and there is also no lag as i head back as i head back into the penthouse let's move on to the next game so the next game is apex legends the reason why i'm in the training area is because i couldn't find an actual lobby so here it is what i will say it was easy to shoot the target I did feel a tiny bit of lag sometimes while turning around, but other than that, I can't really see much downside about this. I will say for all of these, I was using controllers. So please keep in mind that keyboard and mouses may differ to controllers. Other than that, I have had a very good experience with these games. Uh, there was nothing whatsoever that took me away from the game. Sometimes they would crash, there would be little bits of lag, but that was mostly it. Now I am going to interview a guy that has also used the shadow before and I'm going to ask him a couple of questions and see what he thinks about cloud services and shadow in general. Hello, so I'm here with Motza, say hello. Hello. So I want to ask you the first question, what device, laptop or PC do you use to play things such as games, apps and such? Well, I use a PC for games, but I also use the laptop for all other things. Uh, second question, have you used any cloud services that access content such as files, games, programs, etc? Well, besides trying out Shadow, um, not really, no. Do you think cloud services are good and or bad? If so, tell me why. I think cloud services are great. That's because you can access them 
from just about anywhere. Fourth question, what are your thoughts of me talking to you about Blade and their services like Shadow? You know, I like it. I like them. They're a good company. And um, the service they provide, it's, uh, it's really interesting step towards making cloud services more of a thing you know? cloud PC mm. uh, I think they're the people to do it I, I don't know but I, first I've ever heard of them what are your thoughts after using the shadow yeah I tried the shadow out um, you get a really nice PC um, a cloud PC it's your, your remote connect to it um, my latency was not that great, but it could be just my distance. Um, the actual specs, the PC that you get, it's fantastic. And as my last and final question, what are your final thoughts on cloud services in general? So after using the shadow, what are your second and final thoughts about using cloud services? I think... They're pretty sweet. Um, you can use them, like I the what Shadow's doing. I think is a step in the right direction for cloud services as a whole. And you can connect to it with your own little device. Mm -hmm. All that. Oh, it's great. All right. Uh, thank you for being with us today, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Oh gosh, you too. Alright, thank you very much. There is a lot to explore with the Shadow PC, but those are the basics that I wanted to cover. Before I finish up the video, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that helped chime in, either if it was voting, sending a message about your thoughts etc etc it really helped my project out and i thank all of you for making this possible without further ado here is the credits